Today, let's get started with GraphQL. Now, you might have known that Superbase is the easiest and fastest way to spin up a hosted Postgres database in 2024. Now, what you might not know is that you actually get a REST as well as a GraphQL API right out of the box with any Superbase project. Now, this is made possible by this amazing PG GraphQL extension, which actually implements GraphQL within your database. Um, so it is a Postgres extension, mainly written in Rust. Um, so therefore, you know, the efficiency gain is pretty, pretty nice. Um, and it is right there. It is pre-installed within your application. Um, so any Superbase project actually has uh, project reference superbase co slash graphql right there um, available so let's get started you know the easiest way to get started is to go to database.new select your organization um, give it a name so we'll say super graphql um, you can generate a password just make sure that you copy that password and store it somewhere safe and then select your preferred region, plenty of regions to choose from. Now I'm here in Singapore, so I'll choose Southeast Asia. And then we'll just let this spin up for a minute. So again, there is plenty of things included. Um, there's a REST API with Postgres included. There's a GraphQL API included, um, file storage, you know, plenty of things. If, if you've worked with Superbase for a while, you probably know all this. Um, but if you're new here, welcome. Uh, database is new and you are up and running in no time. There we are. We are up and running. All services are functional. So now what we can do is we can just start with um, a quick start template. I'm creating one of the quick starts. Let's just use the uh, to do list quick start here. Uh, which also has a bunch of auth policies in. And so now if we go to the table editor, we got some to do's here. So let's um, insert a row. So we currently don't have any user. Um, so let's actually create uh, a new user. We'll just say tester. Um, so we can use that and we'll auto confirm the users so that we can um, use them right away. Uh, to do insert um, row, we can select a record, um, this one here, and then we'll just say, um, we'll need to record the graph, uh, graph QL video. We'll save that. Um, we'll do another one uh, also on this user uh, record Apollo video. Okay, give that a save. So now we have some data in our database. And so in the API docs, we actually have um, graphical included. And you know, the great thing about um, uh, that is we have kind of the docs here. So we can query our to do's, for example. So we can maybe um, write a query here, maybe we need our to do's collection, we want um, uh, maybe one uh, edges. Node and then the node ID, and maybe the task. And so we can fire this off. Now we can see record the GraphQL video. If we set this to two, then we get two records, record the GraphQL video and record Apollo video. So we can see our GraphQL API is up and running. We can also additionally um, provide some headers or some role impersonization. So for example, uh, so now we're kind of using the service role. If we go to the table editor, and um, so we do have auth policies. Uh, so for example, select 
uh, individuals can view their own to do's. So if we now were to go back um, to uh, GraphQL, so this is the great thing, it, you know, implements with Superbase auth, auth as well. So if we go anon roll, um, fire this off, we will get no data um, as well. And then we can go authenticate it and we can impersonate um, our user here. So that's the user who created the to do's. So if we run that again, then we get our to do's back. So there you have it. This is how quickly you can get up and running with Postgres and GraphQL uh, right there in the dashboard database new. That's it. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to learn about, do let us know in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.